this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're looking at the HTC Titan Windows phone on AT&T. This is their latest flagship phone along with the Samsung Focus S running Windows Phone 7.5 Mango. The HTC Titan lives up to its name with its 4.7 inch display. That's a Super LCD and yes, that's pretty huge and that makes this a very large phone, though it's not that much bigger than the HTC HD7S from June of 2011 and even the Samsung Focus S with its 4.3 inch display. We'll compare them in a minute. But first we'll take a look around the phone. We've got the standard Windows capacitive buttons down here. We've got a front facing 1.3 megapixel camera. Uh, the only thing that uses that right now is Tango for video chat. Microsoft did buy Skype, but they don't have a Skype client yet. On the side we have the micro USB port. Up top we have the power button. Pretty hard to press. HTC seems to like it give us a hard time with pressing those things. It's dual mic setup. One of the mics is up here. Here's your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the back, you can see we've got nice metal unibody design, nice quality stuff, especially compared to the Samsung Focus S, which is a seriously plasticky phone. Dual LED flash is your speaker, very loud speaker. 8 megapixel camera, takes 720p video. It doesn't do 1080 because you need a dual core processor to do that. A little plastic cap at the bottom because that's where the antennas are. And you've got your dedicated camera shutter button there, that's a requirement for Windows phones, and these are your volume keys. So this is a lovely unibody design phone, and it's not that hard to take apart. It's, it follows the, the line of the HTC, HTC Sensation and the HTC Amaze. The whole thing just lifts right off like that, and wraps around the sides. And then what you've got is the naked guts of the phone, basically. SIM card goes here, and there's your battery. The phone has a 1600 milliamp battery. That's pretty close to the Samsung Focus S again with the 1650 milliamp battery. And battery life is really good on this despite the large display. I guess it's one of the benefits of having a single core CPU. Battery life can be quite good. This makes it through a full day with moderate to heavy use on a charge easily. That's quite refreshing after using some high end Android phones and even the iPhone 4S. Now we'll do a size comparison between the Titan here and the HTC HD7S, the outgoing phone on AT&T. And you can see the difference in size, but it's actually not that huge considering you're getting half an inch of display. That's because there's so little bezel around this phone. And you can see the difference in display quality too. This was not the, the, the best that HTC ever did in terms of displays, and this one's a great improvement. Now I'll compare it to the Samsung Focus S over here. And in terms of size, you can see it's bigger, but it's actually not hugely bigger. And the display competes nicely with the Super AMOLED Plus display on the Samsung, which is surprising, because that's one very saturated and vivid display. In terms of thickness, they're both thin phones, but the Samsung is one of the thinnest phones that there is. It's a third of an inch, but not too much of a difference there. Now we've compared this to some large phones, and we'll show you what it looks like next to the iPhone 4S. Obviously, significantly bigger than the 3.5 inch display iPhone 4S. In terms of thickness, there yeah, it's pretty competitive. Now Windows phones have always been pretty fast. It's a very highly optimized operating system and, and Microsoft picks one, one CPU that they primarily want to see the platform running on. This time it's a second gen Qualcomm Snapdragon MSM 8255 CPU with graphics acceleration. Runs at 1.5 gigahertz and again it's a single core CPU. Now we're very specs conscious and we know you are too, but the thing is that the operating system is so well optimized for this that Microsoft said they didn't see much of a performance improvement by going with the dual core, so why not keep the handset cheaper? Hence we have single core CPUs. I'm not complaining because you can see this just zips through live tiles really quickly. You can get through your UI, no problem whatsoever. Launch something fairly graphically intensive like Flixer, which depends on the data connection, but still you can see that it's going really fast. And now it's using the data connection to download this. And this, by the way, has HSPA plus 14.4 on AT&T's network. That's there. what we call faux 4G. It's not LTE 4G. It's not the super duper fast. But it's the same thing that you find in the iPhone 4S. And we see download speeds between 3 and 6 megs, which is pretty, pretty decent. Darn good. Here we are in Flixster right now. And how about if we want to see more information about a movie. And 
And if we want to check out a trailer, This is over AT&T's network. We do not have Wi-Fi turned on. This is when it's nice to have a 4.7 inch display. And the volume is only at halfway right now. Looking good. Though the display is large, it's only 800 by 480 pixels. Now, I, I say only 800 by 480 isn't terrible, but nowadays we're seeing QHD and higher resolution displays. It doesn't sound that impressive. That puts us just under 200 pixels per inch resolution. But honestly, to me, fonts are still looking very crisp. I'm not seeing a whole lot of pixelation, so I'm not complaining. It's a nice, sharp, super LCD display. And the reason that it is at resolution is because, again, that's what Windows Phone supports. Right now, it's 800 by 480. Microsoft has a pretty rigid set of requirements for Windows Phone. That allows them to make the phones very fast, responsive, and stable, but on the other hand, you, you don't get things like variation in like super high clock speed CPUs or high resolution displays. In terms of user interface, this is your standard Windows Phone 7.5 Mango interface, and you can change the live tiles here. They're called live tiles because they can update. As you can see, I've got a calendar appointment right here. It shows me what my next appointment is. If I have any messages, it's going to show with the number counter there. And my people tile moves around via weather. You'll see the weather updates, that kind of thing, like right there. And you can remove live tiles that you don't want, and you can add ones. Just tap and hold on anything here in your full list of programs, and say I want to have Evernote be there. And there we go, we've got Evernote. In fact, you can, you can pin a specific favorite note if you want for quick access here, not just the general Evernote application, which is pretty cool. There is no widgets, so there's no customization in the sense that Android has it, however, so it's a bit like iOS. It's, a, it's reasonably locked down, a bit more customizable, obviously, than iOS, but what you see here is what you get. One of the strong points of Windows Phone is its music player, the Zune Music and Video Playing Service. You can see it's Graphically very pretty. It gives me a history of what I've been watching and listening to. Shows me stuff I've asked, added recently here. Then if we go into music, this is very similar to the address book. You get this kind of text-based listing with an alphabetic separator once you have enough entries. So we'll just pick something and play it. Very pretty interface. We've got playback controls right here that are always available. It plays music in the background. And the speaker is once again really excellent on this and amazingly loud. That's some pretty, pretty nice sound. Violin is pretty hard to reproduce on a small speaker. Well, And when you're looking at your music here, besides seeing this with album view, you can also look by song, and you can get biography-related information for what you're listening to. It's a pretty rich experience. And for video playback, it works with MPEG-4 video, like pretty much every mobile device on the planet, and you use Zoom to load music and videos. So now we're playing a 720p video of Michael Clayton here. So you can sideload your music and videos from your own collection, and you can download stuff from Zoom. You can get a Zoom Pass, which is an all-you-can-eat subscription. Just listen to all the music that you want as long as you're paying your monthly subscription fee. And you get 10 tracks a month MP3 DRM free with that. And they also have videos for rent and for download as well, mostly movies. The browser is the usual IE9 mobile. It's pretty capable. I, I wouldn't put it up there with Android and iOS just yet. Once in a while I see it screw up rendering a little bit. An image goes outside of its column. Uh, fonts can be not quite the size that they should be, but overall it's very fast and fluid. Pinch zooming is about as good as it gets here. 
a very pleasant experience overall. This does not have Adobe Flash. I suppose the consolation is that Adobe said that they are abandoning, abandoning all mobile Flash development anyway, so it's going to be in HTML5 world soon, and this does support HTML5. If you want to see YouTube videos, you just go to the YouTube website, and it will play the mobile version. So here we are on the YouTube site, the mobile version, and we'll check out a Battlefield 3 video. And again, this is over AT&T's network. There's one heck of a loudspeaker. Looks great. Looks especially great at 4.7 inches. Call quality on phone is good. I would say the Samsung Focus X is a little bit better, but wait, because it's one of the nicest, nicer sounding phones on AT&T's network. This one is pretty good, but it's not quite as sharp and clear sounding for outgoing voice. Again, it's not a bad phone by any means, it's just the Samsung Focus S is that good for voice. This guy has a louder earpiece, however, and obviously a much louder speaker, which is nice if you tend to call from noisy places and you can't hear very well. And it has noise cancelling that works fairly effectively as well. Reception is about average. One thing I notice is that, if we take a look at the back one more time as a refresher, you've got the plastic antenna cap here, and there is a little bit of grip of death going on in my experience. Now, it's a pretty big phone, so a lot of people won't even be able to cover that entire area with their hand, but I suggest not holding it and grasping and covering that entire back plastic cover because you might see the signal drop. And right now, I can't even actually make it drop. Oh, there we just did it. We dropped one bar by squeezing it tight at the bottom. And last, we'll take a look at Xbox Live. And we've got a bunch of games installed here. We'll just check out Need for Speed. The selection of games is quite good. That's one of the selling points for the phone, along with the, the Zoom music experience. You get Xbox Live games that are pretty high quality, nice 3D things. You've got casual games, you've got arcade games, you've got action games. Obviously, we have a driving game here. And we'll go straight into a race. Here we are running a Need for Speed. Plays really nicely. Really fun with the giant display. So if you're interested in a Windows phone, and, and I think that you should be, you probably noticed a lot of reviewers are really fond of this new operating system. It's really enjoyable, it's relaxing, it's easy to use, yet it's pretty powerful, and you've got great multimedia on here, along with things like MS Exchange support with Push Email and mobile version of Microsoft Office Suite on here. It's a lot of fun, and if you're trying to decide between this and the Samsung Focus S, we're going to be doing a smackdown between these two high-end Windows 7 phones. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.